a block with width W is placed on an inclined plane, making an angle of phi from the horizontal. If the coefficient of friction between the block and the inclined plane is 0 0.25, find the value of phi when the block intends to slide down. So we are given a block with weight W. Since it is standing on an inclined plane, we can resolve the weight W to its normal and tangential component. Knowing that this angle here is equal to phi, by geometry, this angle right here must also be equal to phi. And to solve for the normal component of the force, W, we can utilize the cosine function. So we have W cosine of phi. And to maintain equilibrium acting perpendicular to the surface, it must act, the surface must exert a normal force that is equal to the weight. W cosine of phi. And that is the normal force. And there's also a tangential component of the weight that is equal to W sine of phi. And to maintain equilibrium, we must not forget that there is a friction of the block and the surface that is equal to F, which stands for friction, which is basically equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Knowing that N is equal to W cosine of phi and the coefficient of friction equal to 0 0.25, we can solve for the angle phi by taking summation of force parallel to the surface equal to 0 taking upward forces to be positive. So we have an upward force of W cosine of phi times 25.25 minus the downward force W sine of phi equal to 0. Factoring out W, we have W cosine of phi times 0 0.25 minus sine of phi equal to 0. And we can divide both sides by W. So this basically cancels out. And then we can add both sides by sine of phi. So we get cosine of phi times 0 0.25 equal to sine of phi. And dividing both sides by cosine of phi, we have sine divided by cosine. That's basically tangent of phi. And you can solve for phi by getting the arc tangent of 0 0.25. Using our calculator, we get arc tangent of 0 0.25 equal to 14.04 degrees, which is letter D. For the second problem, the angle between two forces when the resultant is maximum and minimum respectively are, the answer for this is letter B. We can prove this by constructing a force triangle. Connecting head to tail, we have force P and force Q to produce the resultant equal to R. And an angle between P and Q, let's call this theta. If we assume that theta is equal to 180 degree. Using the cosine law, we get r equal to square root of p squared plus q squared minus 2 times p times q cosine of 180 degree. And cosine of 180 degree is equal to a negative 1. Simplifying, we get r equal to p squared plus q squared plus 2 times p times q. And you can do some factoring from this expression we get square root of p plus q squared. And the square root of p plus q squared is just equal to p plus q. We can see that r is equal to p plus q, which, in which p and q add up each other to produce the maximum resultant force. Now if we assume v to be equal to 0, so assuming v I mean, theta is equal to 0, we get the resultant r is equal to square root of p squared plus q squared minus 2 times p times q cosine of 0. And cosine of 0 is just equal to 1. We get r equal to square root of p squared plus q squared minus 2 p times q. And we can do some factoring of this expression. We get square root of p minus q squared, which is equal to p minus q. And we can see that p and q subtracts each other out, which produces the minimum force that's equal to p minus q.